Mm -hmm. Hold your thoughts, Smitty. We're going to go it. right to Coach Judoka, who's at the podium. Mark, back right. Mark Murphy, Boston Herald. Ime, um, how has Rob recovered? And did he ever talk to you about it? looked like he tweaked his knee pretty good in the game the other night. Did he ever talk to you guys about that? Yes, he is. Um, he mentioned it. He did not do a specific thing, so doesn't know when it happened. He just sprinted up and down one time after one possession, and it, it was bothering him a little bit, and that's why he asked to come out. So not a specific incident. We watched the film, and nothing stood out there, and obviously led to the blow by with Curry, where he couldn't move great on that possession. But doing better the day off, the rest uh, equal with today and tomorrow. And Optimistic it'll be good to go, but we'll test it before the game as usual. You've uh, you've stayed in some variation of drop coverage pretty much for the most part against Steph. With your bigs, are they supposed to be reading like what spot on the floor they're supposed to be just because it's that spot on the floor? Or do you want them to read where the screen level is and react to that more so? A little bit of both. We want them above three point line at, at three point line at the lowest. Um, you know, we're leaving it up to our guards. A lot of responsibility where they want to pick him up and pressure and mix up his pickup point. I'm understanding they can mix some unders uh, that have been quite successful against him if it's high enough. If not, you know, force him in and uh, rear view contest and get the onus on those guys more than anything. Uh, their bigs aren't really getting out quick rolling, so we can uh, show a crowd there. And they're really trying to set the screens and free them up as, as much as possible, more so than rolling, so our bigs don't have to worry about dropping. Joe? Um, Marcus seemed to like fall out of the sky onto his back, I think, in the fourth quarter. I'm just checking to see if he's okay. And then do you feel like you need more out of Tatum? With the Marcus play, I think you're referring to the Jalen transition where he got the basket and Marcus got the free throw, put us up five. He got pushed in the, and they called the foul and he's okay though. Uh, hasn't mentioned anything and played the rest of the game as far as that. With Jason, it's, it's uh, sometimes you equate missing shots to playing poorly. Um, what we've seen is he's had some really good looks, especially in game one, and we knew if he got those same looks throughout the series, uh, he'd be successful. Um, they are trying to take him out, guard him with two at times, and uh, don't want to give him specific matchups. And at times, he has to be the playmaker. And so in the two wins, he's had 13 and nine assists, and you know he's getting 11 in those, and I think he's down around five in the losses. And so um, don't really equate the numbers of how he's shooting more so the result of him making the play and making the right read and so at times it can get frustrating uh, you know them trying to take you out but understanding how it'll loosen everything up just by making the right play and you've seen that at times with him hitting Derek and Marcus and our bigs in the pocket and having the numbers behind against some really easy baskets and so um, take your spots to be aggressive when you have the matchup you like understand that they're going to guard you a certain way and, and make the right read which he has in the two wins on your left Jay you said you don't really look at the shooting percentages with Jason, but he's shooting 27.5% from inside the arc. Uh, how much of that, how much do you guys need to do to set him up in better situations? What does he need to do to finish better on those opportunities? I'd say some stronger finishes. Um, and I'm, as I mentioned at times, looking for fouls. Uh, when he plays off two and draws the contact, he's finished well. Uh, the other part is inside the three, they are really crowding and trying to take him away. So we want him, when he gets a cross match, to pop to space or roll in the pocket and try to get an advantage as far as that. So some of the isolations, elbow things we've done for him, they're really loading up. And even with that, he has to invite that and get guys other shots. And so more spacing than playing at the nail uh, elbow area in this series. And uh, for him, the numbers, I think, over penetrating at times, you know, but he has done a good job of mixing that and drawing the crowd, which is there every time and finding a shooter. So it's a balance of both. And then just quite frankly, he's missed some easy ones that he usually makes around the basket, especially with their lack of rim protection at times. Gary. You may, uh, the narrative over the last couple of days is you guys blew your opportunity. The series is over. Gold State with the championships medal is going to put you guys away. How do you emphasize that the series is tied to your guys but also that you can't have for the last fourth quarters that you've had, like you're kind of blowing it. Like, how do you kind of blend that in, that the message of you're very much alive, but then this can't happen again? Yeah, first thing you look at is it's 2-2, two -two, and we obviously put ourselves in the position to, you know, stretch the, the lead and be up 3-1, but uh, bottom line is we're 2-2, two -two and we earned that as well, not being down 0-2 or, you know, 1-2 or whatever the case may be. And so... Um, 
I'm sure they said the same thing about Golden State after we beat them here, and, and that we know it's a long series. And like I said, we've been battle tested in two seven game series in Milwaukee and Miami. And so for us, looking at the positives and the things we could have done better, uh, not playing our best offense overall, I think the narrative gets shifted to Curry and what he's doing. But um, in our wins and losses, they're scoring the same points. And so a lot has been relying on our offense to your point in the fourth quarter. But even throughout the game, we had several opportunities being up five, six, seven, and poor, poor offense or uh, turnovers let them back in the game. And so the difference in the game that we stretched the lead was we took advantage of those opportunities. Uh, we're solid. And against this team, anytime you run some poor offense, turn the ball over, live ball turnovers, let them get out, we know how quickly can get, they can get back in the game. And that was the case uh, in game four when we had our chances. By Manning Seal and his media email, two on Jalen. Number one, what do you think has allowed him to be so successful scoring-wise in this series? And number two, just how can you continue to involve him into the later stretches of games? It feels like he usually does most of his work early, sometimes gets lost in the shuffle late in the fourth quarter. Well, I mean, they, they, they are switching some off-ball stuff, and, and we get some favorable matchups. But... Um, they're not guarding him the same as Jason. I think they're guarding him more one-on-one. -on -one. Um, and he obviously he's a high-level scorer that can take advantage of that. Um, putting Green on him on the perimeter a little bit, I think, takes Green out of his comfort zone. And uh, he's one of their best help defenders. So he's had some advantages there where they don't like to switch off ball. And uh, to your point, he's got it going early in the game. It's a, it's a balance and a mix, I think. Uh, ideally, we like to have Jason and Jason, Jason and Jalen both rolling at the same time. And so it's a mix of going to the guy that's being aggressive and scoring and getting the others involved as well. And I think that's obviously when we're at our best, if you've seen throughout the year, when they're in their high 20s or 30s together. And so it's a balance of that. But um, at the same time, our players got to understand we got to put them in position to get them the ball in late in game and understand the advantage that they have. And so it works both ways. At times, we've been a little stagnant and they're standing around when they can be more aggressive to get the ball. But as well, we can put them in some play calls to get, get the scoring areas as well. Ron, over here on the right. Email Ron Krejcik from the San Francisco Chronicle. You talked a little earlier about your defense on the screen and roll against Steph. How unique a, a challenge is it against him, not just because of his range, but because of the way he moves without the ball? Does that make it harder to maybe double or do things you might do against other perimeter players? I would say, I mean, obviously the range extends the floor some, and you know, some of the shots that he's hitting are only shots that he can hit and have been highly contested. So he's hit a few of those. I think when you look at the overall numbers of him making threes out of our touch, I think it's very low. It's a combination, but it does get him in a rhythm, the fact that he's getting some of those shots off. But then he's moving in transition and relocating in some of those looks. So I think he was uh, three for six, three for eight uh, last game from out of touch, which isn't terrible, but he is getting some looks up. Um, the thing he does well, obviously, is they once he gets off the ball, the movement, is, that's different. Uh, he doesn't just stop, and they all are hunting shots for him, as you saw when we switched a little bit. So we can mix it up there, um, be a little bit more physical, mix some unders on him when he's that high, and we've been good as far as that. But um, the fact that he's such a willing and, and good playmaker, I think it makes it tougher to go after him, uh, as opposed to other guys who don't want to get off the ball. He finds the guys in the pocket, and then they have obviously that's when Draymond's at his best, making plays for others. So it's a balance of both. And like I said, I think the offense that he, he's having a successful series offensively. But if we're playing offense the right way, yeah, we'd be at three-one at least right now.